I built a SaaS product in 43 days, and the part that I was most confident about ended up being the part that I struggled with the most. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the entire process. The early planning, building the MVP, the reality check from the very beginning, all the way to how we finally got our first paying customers. This is my product, Newsletter Hero. It helps content creators turn their existing content into high quality newsletters in minutes instead of hours. This is the first product that I'm building on my mission to own a farm when AI takes over. In the first 10 days, I realized that building this wasn't gonna just take hours, but days. I went into this thinking that it was gonna be easy. Pick an idea, start coding, get momentum going. Instead, it felt like I was stepping into a dense bog. There are so many decisions that you never think about until you're actually starting a company. I also wasn't building this by myself either. I was working with a small team. As of right now, they wanna stay behind the scenes, but they are a big part of this. And I swear they're real, I have friends, they are not AI agents. And before this group of very real human people could write a single line of code, we had to figure out how we're gonna work together. Who does what, who owns which part, and what is the actual vision for this whole thing? This part of organization took way more energy than I'd expected because I'm used to doing everything by myself. In the past, that also meant quitting projects when I burned out trying to carry the entire thing. This time it felt different. Working with a human team forced accountability, and it also let me focus on the stuff that I'm actually good at. For me, and in this project, it's product design, content, as well as some engineering. Once we were aligned on how us humans were gonna build, the next question was, what were we gonna build? We ended up running a ton of analysis, and newsletters kept coming up over and over. So there's a couple good reasons. First, their growth is directly aligned with social platforms. Second, they're not saturated from a product standpoint. And third, I believe they still have years of runway before they're made obsolete. It felt like it was a bet worth making. After we, the human team committed to this idea, I leaned on the biggest advantage that I have. I know a lot of creators and newsletter writers, so I just called them. I asked what they were struggling with, what annoys them, and what they wish existed right now. Almost every conversation pointed to these same three pain points. So first, people wanted to write things faster and in their own voice. Second, they wanted stronger subject lines. Third, they wanted an easier way to distribute across multiple platforms. This became our starting point. Not because it sounded cool, it, it really doesn't, but because real, also human users kept repeating it. And with that clarity, we finally had the foundation we needed to start building. That's where the real work started. These next two weeks were a blur. Coding, testing, rethinking, trying not to break everything that we had just built. And it also brought forth a whole different set of challenges. We kept the MVP simple on purpose. So we had custom templates, subject line generation, user profiles, credits, and payments. Basically the core infrastructure of a website with two main features. Nothing fancy, just the bare minimum to see if people actually cared about what we were making. While we were building, I also started putting out some early marketing. And by marketing, I mean, I vibe coded a landing page in a few hours and hoped it would convince some people to sign up. It, it wasn't perfect, but it existed. And sometimes that's all you need at this stage. This was also when AI tools became our superpower. We could vibe code a feature in a single session, get it working and then circle back and clean it up so it would actually scale. If you've ever tried to stack vibe coded features on top of other vibe coded features, you know that that road leads to chaos. Maybe it doesn't if you're a better engineer than I am, but who knows? We tried hard to avoid that by stabilizing each feature before building an excel. We basically looked through all the code, make sure it was scalable, and then we implemented it. After that, something crazy happened. Within a few days, we had a subject line generation tool fully working. Not long after that, we had the ability to write full newsletters directly from YouTube videos. This was a huge moment for us. ChatGPT and Claude, they do not extract video transcripts, which means you can't really go from a YouTube video to a newsletter or direct content as easily with that. There's some workarounds, but essentially ours was the best solution in the space. And that meant we had an advantage right out of the gate compared to the crowded market. Once we had enough features stitched together, we also started testing the crap out of this on my own newsletter and a couple other newsletters of my friends. This is when we launched our first alpha test and the feedback we got from our first 10 users genuinely surprised me. I assumed creators wanted a one-click solution. So you press a button, boom, newsletter done, boom, ship it out. But that wasn't what they wanted at all. They actually wanted more control more options, more iterations, more ways to shape their newsletter and the subject lines. They wanted to work in the product, not have everything done for them. The feedback completely changed how we thought about the product. 
By day 24, we had something real. Again, not perfect, not polished, but a product people could actually use that had real user feedback, and it was time to go live to the public. Going live felt like hitting a milestone, but if I'm being totally honest, I thought this is the part where everything would start getting easier. We had a working product, we had a landing page, and an audience that had been following the things that I built for years. I was already planning how I was gonna spend the profits on my chicken coop, some papaya trees, and just like a little hammock that I could sip a fruit drink on. I genuinely believed that once we launched, people would just show up. That did not happen. The moment we went live, I realized that building a product and getting people to care about a product are two completely different games. And I was way less prepared for the second one. These days felt messy. So during the day, we were fixing bugs, tightening the UI and adding features that people had been asking for. The night, I was trying to figure out how to get the word out without looking desperate or annoying. And <laughs> that, was, that was quite difficult. We added integrations for Kit and MailChimp we built a subject line evaluator, we added podcast uploads, and we created an internal analytics dashboard. It felt like every time we shipped one thing, another idea showed up that was just as important. And this is something that we are still wrestling with. Marketing also became a grind in a way that I was unprepared for. I was posting on X, posting on LinkedIn, I was sharing builds, giving updates, and talking to creators who might benefit from the product. I even started posting on Reddit, which had very mixed results and is essentially always a gamble, right? But I needed to get traffic from somewhere. I needed to tell people about this product that we built that I believe in, that I thought was valuable, and I still think it's valuable. I was also reaching out to friends, which was quite humbling. It forced me to explain the product clearly, and every time that I fumbled it, uh, I could feel it. The truth is, I always thought marketing was something that I understood because I have an audience. These 10 days taught me that attention is not the same as adoption. People follow content, they do not automatically use products, especially if the products aren't necessarily made for your specific audience. Like newsletters for my past data science audience, the audience that follows me on LinkedIn, maybe isn't the perfect potential match. The realization hit me harder than any technical roadblock that we ever faced. By day 35, we ship more features, we refine the product into something really high quality, very value add, and we tighten the experience. But the bigger lesson was that building fast is only half of the game. The other half is putting the product in front of an audience that we care about it. And that part was just the beginning. I will never forget day 35 of this journey. Not because of something glamorous, but because it was the first time a stranger paid money for something that we built. And the way it happened, I kind of think it's a little embarrassing. I was scrolling Reddit late at night. I was half looking for inspiration, half avoiding real work, when I stumbled on a post from someone celebrating that their micro SaaS had just passed the $2,000 mark in a week. As a celebration, they would become someone's first paying customer. I figured I had nothing to lose, so I left a comment explaining what we were building. I was one of maybe 50, 100 different comments, so I thought it would be a small probability. Really didn't expect anything to come of it. But they signed up. Ours was one of the three products that they ended up choosing to sign up for. That moment to me felt surreal. Part of me wanted to celebrate, like, yes, we got our first semi-organic customer. Part of me felt like I kind of cheated the system that this wasn't a real win. But regardless of how it happened, we did have our first paying customer. And more importantly, they gave us incredibly thoughtful feedback as someone completely disconnected from the product. We ended up integrating every single thing they mentioned, especially the user onboarding. That interaction alone made the product noticeably better. After that first one, a few more paying customers followed. All of them were from my existing network, creators who already trusted me and could actually use the product in their workflow. They weren't being nice, they were giving us real feedback, they were pointing out real flaws, and they were pushing the product in ways that we hadn't anticipated. Watching these early users interact with the product every week started to also change how I thought about what we were building. It wasn't just a product anymore. It was something with real potential, but also something that demands real responsibility. People were using this product. It was part of their livelihood, part of how they make money with a the newsletter. There is some weight to that. This stretch of days also made something obvious that I did not want to admit at first. I am currently just ass at marketing. Building is my comfort zone. Shipping features is fun. Making content is fun. But when it comes to telling the world about why they should care, I'm still really figuring that out. And I realized that if this product is gonna grow, if anything else I build in the future is gonna grow, I also need to grow in this area. By day 43, we had a small group of paying users, weekly usage, and a clear sense of what needed to come next. We finally had earned a little bit of momentum. This next phase is about making more people aware that a tool like this even exists. Currently, we're preparing for a product hunt launch before the end of the year, and I'm documenting that whole process. The speed at which the world is moving right now makes it even more important to build fast and share everything you learn.
And that's exactly what I plan on doing. I'll be making more videos like this so you can learn from my successes and my greatest failures, like the one with marketing. If you comment papaya, you can redeem that also for a real papaya no, no, when my no, farm no, 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 is built. Also, as a special surprise, thank you for watching the whole video. This is my cat. Aww. Okay. If you want to know why I'm building the SaaS right now and why I think we're in a very small window before AI completely changes the landscape, I made a full video breaking down my reasoning. Check it out next.